In this video, we're producing rock music. I'm going to be using Ableton 10, and I'm going to be using Reason. But we're going to be writing parts, recording parts, consulting music theory, and using effects to try to build a nice, juicy rock section. Because this is going to be used for one of my videos, and I want a solo on top of it. And I don't want a solo on top of just a simple chord progression. I want a solo on top of a well-produced simple chord progression. So the four chords we're going to be working with here are just E minor, G major, A major, and C major. It's just those four chords over and over and over again. And that's what I want to turn into the big jam section. So we already know what the chords are going to be. We already know that the tempo, I've already chosen a tempo of uh, 88 beats a minute. And here's what I've already prepared. This is the only part that's recorded already because I thought it would be really boring to go through this. It's just an acoustic guitar, okay? I just took an acoustic guitar, I pointed an SM57 here, and I pointed another SM57 here, and I hit record, and I just strummed that acoustic guitar. And that's what you're seeing right here is my acoustic guitar parts. And right here, you can see I named them ACL and ACR for acoustic left and acoustic right. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put this one all the way in the left speaker, and I'm going to put this one all the way in the right speaker. And if we hit play, we'll hear what I recorded already. This is just the raw acoustic guitar part from earlier. There's the G, A, C, okay? Now, I recorded this earlier, but I also recorded it, those same chords, a different way, because I'm not sure what I want to do yet. I know what the chords are going to be. I know what the tempo is going to be. I know generally it's going to be a rock vibe. Past that, I don't have the vision in my head. I'm just going to be creating here. And I don't want to limit myself to just that strumming pattern. So I did another strumming pattern of those same chords, and it sounds like this. Now, I did one third, one last uh, strumming pattern as well, just to give myself another option here. And this one sounds like this. Now, depending on what I want to do, you can hear that one's got a lot more, you know, percussion and a lot more uh, rests in it. So I don't know which one I'm going to use. I may use more than one. I may use just one of them. Um, but I like having options. I didn't. I don't want to just say, okay, here's my strumming pattern. Um, at least I get three different strumming patterns to play off of. So with these strumming patterns, I mean, we still don't have a jam yet. I don't want to just be doing guitar solos over just this, right? We need a lot more going on here. So what's the next step? I could start processing this acoustic guitar and making it sound good, but I feel like that's a big distraction at this point. I think it's way more important to get more instruments involved before we start making those instruments sound good. So one thing I like to do is I like to pull up a really generic drum loop, and I don't want to keep that drum loop. I think that's really annoying to use just these pre-made drum loops. It's, it's, uh, it doesn't sound good. It sounds very robotic, and it's not going to complement your song. However, just to start off with a drum loop to get some rhythm going and to get some juices flowing, I think is very helpful. So here's what I'm going to do. I have Reason running into Ableton, and uh, you can see instead of an external instrument, I have it set to, uh, to Reason here, and I have it set to In. And that means everything that's happening over here in Reason is going to get played through this audio track here in Ableton. So basically, I can make music here in, able to, in Reason, and I've got a sequencer here, I've got all my effects, everything I want from Reason, and it's just going to run through uh, Ableton. Now keep in mind, you can't do this with Reason 11. You have to do this with Reason 10 or under. They disabled this functionality in Reason 11. So here's what I'm going to do. I pulled up a very simple drum machine. This is just called the Dr. Rex drum machine. If I hit run, take a listen. This is boring. Extremely boring. But it gives me something to like hear, right? It gives me something to listen to on top of my acoustic guitar. So let's listen to my acoustic guitar again. And you can hear with the drums, you know, that's, that's a million times better than just this. If, if the goal is to have like a big rock section to play on top of. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to fiddle around for a little bit. I'm just going to play around with different presets. So right now I'm just trying to, I don't want to waste time. I just want to get something going that I can start adding new instruments to. And I want to have some fake drums right now. Later on, we'll make the drums sound a lot better. But right now, it's just kind of quick and dirty. Just let's get things going. And uh, I don't like this one, so let's try a different one. Okay, so I found one that I don't like, but it's got elements that I do like. So that's enough to kind of keep the idea that I'm hearing in my head now. It gave me a little bit of inspiration. It sounds like this. Right? There's a little bit of double bass fill in there. And I also want to hear what that sounds like over this rhythm pattern instead. Remember, I have different rhythm patterns. Let's listen to those same drums over this strumming instead.
And then over this one. Now, as much as I like this little section right here and I like those rhythm patterns, I think like this is not going to be the one I use. I don't think the strumming pattern is the one I use because it feels more of like something I would use for a verse. This feels like something you could sing over, right? And I'm looking for like a guitar solo and I feel like something like this is way bigger. This is the big kind of grand guitar solo territory I'm looking for. So already, just through this process of adding in some really lame fake drums, I'm starting to kind of weed out some options. And that's what this is all about, is coming up with new ideas and then get ridding, getting rid of other ones. So right now, I'm just going to delete this third option. I don't even want it distracting me anymore. And you know what? I think right now, we'll just make up our mind. I don't want to spend too much time on this. I'm just going to make the decision. We're going to use the second rhythm pattern. Now, if I was doing a whole song, keep in mind, then that would be an excellent opportunity to be using all of these. That's a lot of dynamics between that this rhythm. You know, hearing that as a verse and then hearing this for a chorus. You know, that's a great idea, but I'm not making a full song. I'm just making one jam section so I can solo for a lesson video. But I want that jam section to sound good. So at least I've got a good starting point here. I've got the rhythm pattern that I want. And now I feel like I can start adding real instruments. The first thing I'm going to do is maybe tweak my drum pattern a little bit. Because I don't like these drums a lot. So let's kind of go make some real drums instead. And then from there I think adding bass would be a good suggestion. So I'm going to grab my MIDI keyboard and see if it actually works this time. And we will pull up a Reason Refill that I did purchase. I don't buy a lot of plugins. Uh, I've actually avoided it for as often as I can. Um, I've gotten a lot of hand-me-downs, and back in the day, of course, I got a lot through unscrupulous methods. Um, but if I hadn't done that, I would have never learned how to produce, and I would have never actually spent the money on the legitimate versions of those products to begin with. So as a general rule, I'm pro-piracy, because, uh, because I am. I mean, that's the reason I was able to ever afford the, the actual uh, you know, software to begin with. So um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to grab the Ryan Green Alt Drums Pack. And this was about $100, which I don't do that. I've never purchased a sample pack before. But these drums sound really good. And I'm going to grab the, one of these preset kits, uh, all mics. We will do, uh, we'll do producer presets. Um, <laughs> whatever this thing is. Gretsch Room. Let's just grab that. All right. Now, this drum kit is basically just a sampled uh, samples of actual drums. Um, they just sound really good in my opinion. So like right here, you can hear, I've got a kick drum, I got a cross stick, a snare drum, nothing, another snare drum, uh, some tom hits. So I think we're gonna use this instead and I can play this on my MIDI keyboard, which you can't see right now, it's a little bit out of frame. But I'm just gonna uh, start off with just thinking kick and snare. I think this is a great way to start. I don't know what the drum pattern's gonna be. Uh, let's listen to my reference again, okay? Here was my fake drums. And I don't really like that, so I'm gonna mute that, and I'm just gonna try to sing the kick and the snare, all right? Listen, I'm gonna turn on my click, and I'm just gonna think like kick, 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 snare, or kick, kick, snare, kick, ba bum ba and I'm literally just gonna sing it. I wanna be working in my head. I don't wanna be working with theory. I just wanna kinda be hearing what my ears are hearing. And I like to sing that stuff, so let's listen. So I got the first one pretty close to what I was looking for. So this is what I recorded, and we'll take a look at it right here. Here it is. Okay, and then right here, since these four were good, all right, it looks like those four measures were correct, we'll quantize that. And I can do that several different ways, but uh, we'll just do like this. And now it's right on time. And, you know, my velocities here, there's a little bit of changing here, so I'm going to try to even things out a little bit. Um, I don't want these drums to be, uh, I don't want them to be totally robotic, but I don't want them to have a huge dynamic range. So I've got this nice little beat here, but there's no hi-hats, okay? It's very sterile because there's no hi-hats or cymbals. 
So to, I'm just going to add the hi-hats and cymbals in later, all right? You see I copy-pasted that. And now I'm just going to add a new note lane here, and I'm going to record some hi-hats and cymbals. And before I actually hit record, I'm just going to kind of play around. I'm just going to experiment here and see what sounds good. So I've got like a... Here's a hi-hat, like a closed hi-hat. There's a slightly more open hi-hat. There's like a really sloppy open hi-hat. So I'm going to keep things very simple. I decided I'm just going to do a crash cymbal on the one. And then it's just going to be, you know, accented uh, eighth notes on the hi-hat. So one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Very, very simple stuff. So I'm going to try to record that in here. And this time I'm going to hit quantize with record. So that means as I'm recording it, it's actually going to uh, quantize it as I play it. And that means I don't actually have to do it over again. And even if you're not using Reason, these kind of functionalities are available on most DAWs. So just read the manual or Google it and you should be able to work that same thing out. So now I'll try to record that same thing. One, two, three, four. Cool. So now what I can do, these are on separate lanes, right? I recorded the symbols over here and I recorded this stuff down here and I can just merge these together. And now I've got a drum track. Now I'm just going to even things out a little bit. You can see like this one note here is just exceptionally quiet. So I'm just going to grab that guy and bring it up just a little bit. Um, you know, I don't want things to be too um, weird. I, I want things to be audible. So I'm just looking for things that are just uh, anomalies. That's all. I'm just looking for things that are quieter than they realistically should be. This guy looks a little short. So now I've got a drum part, and I'm going to start structuring things here a little bit. I'm just going to make sure things look nice and pretty, right? This is exactly four measures. I know it's boring. I'm just doing a drum loop. I'm not making a full song, but I still want it to sound good. And, uh, you know, all we're trying to do is make four measures sound really good. And if four measures sound really good, then I should be able to play a guitar solo over that for at least, like, four rounds, you know, like 16 times all the way through. And it shouldn't get boring, you know, even though it's just four chords. As long as it sounds good, as long as the solo is interesting then this should sound good, even though it's just a copy-paste, copy-paste, copy-paste. So this is one giant copy-paste of our rhythm pattern. And uh, to keep things easy, we will actually start it on measure five. I like to give myself a little buffer zone here, just in case I want to add something before. So starting on measure five, right, we are going to have our rhythm pattern begin. So right here is basically where our song starts. And just to make things easy, we'll make sure that it ends right here on number 37. And I'm just trying to make sure that, you know, that I know what I'm doing. This is the music that I need to create. This giant block of stuff here is what I need to write. This giant block of stuff here is what I need to write. And what I've already got done now is I've got drums and acoustic guitar. I'm not going to worry about mixing yet. I just want to keep adding instruments at this point in time. And I think a very good idea would be to add some bass guitar. So right now, let me make sure this is labeled as electric. And then I'm going to introduce a bass right now. So this is a five string bass. And of course, the first thing we're going to do is um, tune it up. That is very, very important. So make sure anytime you're recording, anytime the real instruments are, I've forgotten so many times to do it. It's a basic thing. But if you're using a stringed instrument, just tune up. You're going to save yourself a lot of hassle. Okay, so I'm tuned up. And what I want to do, still I'm not worrying about effects right now. I just want to start thinking about what my bass line is. And just like with the drums, I'm going to think about singing it first. So in my head, I'm just going to kind of hear what's going on. And I'm going to hear if something happens. If, if I just start doing ba-da-dum, da-da-da-da-dum, what comes out? So I've got a few ideas. They're all very, very simple. I mean, but I hear a little bit of dum, dum, da, da. Lots of scale runs getting to the next chord. No passing tones or anything like that. So it sounds like I'm hearing just like an E, 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 e F sharp, G, 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 B, A, 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 B, C, C, D, 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 D,
right? So I'm just going to kind of groove around with that for a little while and to see if I can find something that I like. I mean, that's pretty basic, but I'm going to look for little things that I like, just little passages. But right now I'm just kind of improvising. I'm just improvising with the bass and trying to come up with some ideas. All right, so what I've decided to do is keep it uh, pretty basic, but I'd like to not just do the same thing over and over again. So basically, the first part of the bass line is going to be one, two, uh, and four, and 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 one. So you can see I kind of climbed my way all the way up from a low E to a high E. And then I slid my way back down to E. And then this time, instead of kind of climbing my way up, I'm just going to, when that C major comes up, I'll just kind of drive away on the C. So that way, basically what's going to happen is I'll have a bass line that goes through this, and then it's slightly different for these four. And that means I can copy paste it again, and it'll be the same for these eight. So, you know, this is just, uh, I know it's not that creative. We're doing lots of copy pasting. <laughs> copy pasting. We're doing lots of copy pasting. But uh, hopefully the end result is good when we add the guitar solo on top of it, and hopefully it sounds like a rock backing section. Remember, that's the point here. We're not making a whole composition. So let's try to record this a few times, see if I can get it to the point where I like it. Three, four, one. Okay, it's good enough. It's a little sloppy. The timing isn't perfect, um, but uh, we're talking about a real rock band, and how common is it for a real rock band to have a bassist that can't play on time? I'd say pretty common, so that is an authentic bass line right there. And once again, I am not going to worry about uh, mixing it yet. I am not concerned about the mix yet. I, that's just distracting right now. We just want to keep adding stuff or revising stuff. Here's one thing I want to think about. Now that I hear my bass line with my drums, it's worth considering editing my drums just a little bit. All right, let's listen to my uh, drums and my bass line all on their own. And let's see if there might be something that kind of clashes between just those two that we might want to repair. So like right there, first off, my, my playing is sloppy, but I think I could accent that. One, two, and, and, like this. And then moving this one over like this. So basically the bass and the, uh, the kick drum are playing the same rhythm now. See how much better that sounds, right? Now they're kind of in tandem with each other. Let's listen to that again. And then right here, I hear another one where I feel like one of these kick drums could be slid around just a little bit to help accent that bass drum. So right here, the drums are doing... So right here, the kick, the kick drum's coming in a little earlier than the bass guitar. So let's move that over and see if we can get it. And then here again, dudum. So we'll have dudum. And then once again, doubling up on the kick drum. So we're just kind of creating a little bit more symmetry between these two. And you can guess if you're with a band and if you've written these things ahead of time, well, you write your bass line with the kick drum pattern in mind. You don't just, you know, do what I did and just improvise it. Um, you write these things ahead of time. But since we're just doing everything on the computer here, this is a completely legitimate way to do things. And I think it makes things more interesting because now my drum part is dynamic. My drum part isn't just uh, the same thing happening over and over again. We're actually adding in some of my human variation that I did on my bass guitar, some of that variation is now making its way into this sterile drum part that I made earlier. Great. All right. So now these two sound pretty nice. I'm going to join them together and uh, you can hear that they really sync up with that bass drum really well or that bass guitar really well. Let's listen again. 
Cool. All right. So that's our whole loop, right? That's eight measures all together. And I think those eight measures sound pretty good. So if we hear those eight measures again, I don't think that'll be too repetitive. I think it'll sound fine if we copy paste everything we just did. We've got bass. We've got uh, uh, drums. We've got our acoustic guitars. Let's listen with our acoustic guitars again. I think the next step is to add some electric guitars, um, some layered electric guitars. And I don't know what they're going to be. They could be power chords. They could be strums. They could be um, like uh, bar chords. I really don't know. I'm just going to plug in my electric guitar and start playing and see what comes to mind. And I'd like to start maybe with a clean setting. I think maybe a clean setting might be uh, a good place to start. So I'm going to pull up a preset that I've made, which is basically just a... Uh, it's this Lapau 456. It's a free amp simulator. And all I've done is just stuck that in through an impulse loader using the Omnipresent Catharsis impulse pack. Very, very common impulse pack. And uh, yeah, that's all. So I've got my Stratocaster through that. And let's take a listen. I'm just going to start jamming, all right? Uh, I, I really like to experiment with different patterns, different styles, different sounds to hear how it affects things. So what I'm going to start off with is I'm just going to take some like bar chords. I'm going to take these bar chords E minor, G. A major, C major. And we're just going to see what happens by strumming those and doing like chucka chuckas and rusts, rests and stuff like that. You know, I'm not a big fan of that. We've already got the acoustic guitars kind of doing that thing. So maybe let's instead do some more like um, distorted stuff instead. And maybe like some arpeggios, um, st slow strums or something like that. Very slowly picking through a chord. That's my idea. And what we'll do here instead is we'll grab something with a little bit more grit to it. So um, what does this sound like? If we just strum like an E minor. Yeah, something like this. That might be more distortion than I want, so I'm going to try to tone it down on the distortion. Good enough for now. Like I said, I don't want to get distracted in the details. I just want to get something to put on top there. And I'm going to practice just strumming uh, or arpeggiating an E minor. A G major. Let's try it like this. For C, we'll try it like this. Uh, for A major, I mean, we'll try... And then for C, maybe we'll do, and we'll hear what that sounds like. I'll just try it for each chord. Two, three, four. A major. C major. Again. You know what? I think that sounds fine. I like that. It's not very interesting. It's not like, you know, wow, look at that. But we're looking for a bed. Remember, we're creating a bed for a guitar solo. I know I've mentioned that plenty of times, but it's important to keep that in mind. And I think this is a really good layer. So I'm just going to hit record and I'm going to put that in here. One, two, three. Nice. All right. So we'll keep that as the loop and we will uh, copy paste this into infinity. And believe it or not, I feel like I have most of the instruments recorded. I feel like there's a little room for a fake instrument, like some fake uh, organ or fake piano or something like that. So I think that'll be the last element we add before we start cleaning this up and start trying to make it sound good. But let's take a listen to what we've got so far. Right? 
right? It sounds a lot more full than it did when we just had these guys right here, didn't it? I just, uh... Right? That's pretty, pretty barren. But with everything else, it obviously jams a lot harder. So let's talk about fake instruments. Um, I'm hearing organ. I always kind of just go towards organ immediately. It just seems like an easy instrument to implement. So I'm going to use, um, let's try some of the reason presets as I, okay, I, that sounds good on its own, but it's important to never really trust something on its own. You always want to listen to it in the mix. So uh, what we're going to do here is uh, just kind of try to figure out the chords. I am terrible on a keyboard, so it's going to take me a second to figure out these chords. So what really I'm going to do is just play an E note to hear what it sounds like. Sounds good enough. So as you can see, I like to start off just by jamming for a little bit here first. It's kind of a good way to kind of get things going. Um, and I'm thinking, because I'm so bad at this, what I might do is I might do a combination of um, recording myself, and then I might just come in here and edit it afterwards. So um, what I was doing here is basically just uh, sustaining this low E and then letting a high E ring out. And then uh, uh, for the next chord, which was a G major, I introduced a D, right? And then over here, we can, for A major, I'm getting a little bit of an A and a C sharp. And then for the C major... So I got a little dyads. I'm not doing full chords here. All right, we'll just try that. And I'm going to do a terrible job of it, doing those dyads. Um, but we'll see it as it happens here. Two, three, four. Oh, yeah, that's bad. We'll keep it. And then here we'll try to do some rhythm or something. All right, so first off, um, I think that automatically rhythmically quantized, but it certainly didn't correct this horrible note. So let's listen back. Yeah, ooh, there we go. And then keep going here. And did you hear that? I made a little mistake, but I liked it. I want a little grace and boom, boom. So that just happened because I accidentally clicked the note, but I really like the way that sounded. So I'm gonna try to create that little grace note that I heard on accident by shortening this guy down to a 30-second note, and maybe I can get it to just do what I was hearing. Yeah, I like that. I think maybe it's supposed to go here, though. No, nope, it's just supposed to not have a little gap like this. So, like that. Yeah, subtle, but I like it. Dun, 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 dun. And these should be a little more staccato. And this was supposed to be on a syncopated beat. One, two, three, and like this. Bum, 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 bum. Okay, there we go. Much better. So, I've got some cheesy little organs in there. We'll bury them back there, because they're a little cheesy. But I think they might add some, some, some support. And, you know, that's a little weird. It's just an octave. So let's add a fifth in here, alright? Let's uh, retroactively add a fifth in here, like this. And 
same thing here. We'll just add in a fifth like that. And let's get back to 16th notes so we're not... Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. So we've got a whole jam here. And you know what? I think we might be done uh, with instruments. There's one other thing I want to record just to be safe. And that's just to just to make sure, you know, I want to make sure I've got some power chords back there. It might be helpful to have some big giant power chords back there. So I'm going to grab like a um, an overly metal guitar. This is way more than I need. Um, but just to just hit record and have something to um, to have in there in case I want it. I think it's always just safe. To always record the parts you think you might have, especially because I already got the guitar out, right? So here's what we'll do. One, two, E power chord is... Ooh, that's not an E power chord. Well, maybe it is, and I just can't hear it. Much better. All right, so one, two, three, and... Three, four... And of course, for power chords, you always want to make sure things are doubled. So I, I couldn't just live with that on its own. We'll have to do it again um, and just to make sure it's there. So one, two, three, four. where everything repeats. So I've got my doubled electrics and to take care of those we will just name them appropriately. Uh, P chord L, P chord R, and what we'll do is we'll group these guys together like so and we'll call them P chords. And then pan them left and right of course. So this one's left and this one's right. Of course you know by now, you know that um, when you pan guitars left and right like that, they sound more full. As long as you're listening on something stereo, you should notice that this... You should notice that that sounds a lot more full than this. Right? Here, both those tracks are being played in the center, whereas here, they're being played left and right. Okay, now um, it is time to start mixing. And the weird thing is, is that I am on headphones uh, and it's really, really, really hard to mix accurately with headphones on. So what I'm going to have to do is kind of switch back on and off with my headphones here to, to try to describe to you what I'm talking about. But I'll just keep the headphones on for right now, okay? I'm going to try to delete all the tracks that I don't need here. If I've got any extra tracks here that I don't need, just to clean things up, we're just going to get rid of them. Um... I've got my bass, I've got my voice. Okay, great. So yeah, it's time to start mixing. And I think the first thing we can do is easily start working with this acoustic guitar. Let's group this acoustic guitar together. Acoustic. And uh, let's listen to each track individually. This is just the, um, the left track. And to do this, what I'm actually going to do, we'll just turn all these off. So my left track sounds like this. And I'm going to get it off the left, and I'm just going to listen to it in center instead. And on its own, does this sound that good? Not really. I'm not a huge fan of the sound, right? So what can we do to it? Well, to me, like, even with just these headphones on, I can hear there's, like, a lot of frequencies that I just don't need in there. There's a lot of mud in there. So to me, a good place to start is an equalizer. I'm going to throw an EQ on here. I'm just going to start carving out some of the frequencies that I hear. Like, there's a lot of boxiness. I'm guessing that's going to be, like, in this neighborhood. I'm guessing it's going to be in, like, the 500 to 1,000 range. So if I boost that, yeah. Do you hear that? Like, I don't think I need that. So what happens if I take it away? All right. So if I dip that out, that's what it sounds like. Here's a, without it on.
right? To me, that is a huge difference. I mean, just with my little headphones on, I feel like I feel like that's pretty substantial. And also, let's boost this way up so we can hear what we're doing a little bit more. Our acoustic guitars, let's turn that up. So that's just one step. And then we can keep doing that. I feel like there's a little bit more low end here that I don't need. So I just use my ears for something like this, and it's going to be a little hard with just my headphones on, but I'll do my best with my headphones on, and then um, I'll take a break, and then I'll show you what I did with my headphones off instead. So here is just this track, and also, you know, for the sake of it, I am going to put a uh, high-pass filter at the very, very edge here, because my lowest note on an acoustic guitar is a low E. That's 82 hertz. So I'm really not playing anything below 82 hertz. There's nothing happening below 82 hertz, so why should I really even be thinking about anything on that frequency spectrum below 82 hertz. I don't really need it, so it's not going to help me at all. I'm just going to chop it out like that. And might as well take this EQ curve and let's move it on to uh, our acoustic. Well, actually, before we go over to acoustic, right, let's keep playing with this. I feel a little compression could help out. So I'm going to turn off uh, my makeup gain. That kind of automatically screws me up immediately. So I'm turning off the makeup gain on the stock compressor and I'm going to start taking this down until it actually starts compressing. And I'm going to try to get, like, everything compressed. So I want the compressor to always be active. I want everything to be kind of uh, actually being affected. And you can see as long as this orange bar here is active, that means the compression's moving, right? And it's a slight compression. I don't have much on there. Just, you know, just enough to kind of equal things out. And then I'm going to experiment with a lot of compression. All right? I'm going to experiment with another compressor after this that just, like, really heavily compresses just... And maybe it doesn't compress everything, maybe just the peaks, the highest stuff. All right, so that's good enough for right now. I mean, I'm not a huge fan of that, um, but like I said, and I, I can't still work with just these headphones on, so we're going to take everything I just did, and we're going to copy-paste it to uh, my other track. Now, we're not going to just leave it like that. If I move things over here to Acoustic Right, and if instead we listen to Acoustic Right, we'll probably notice things sound different, and we don't want to just use the same chain. So um, what I want to do is kind of turn these off right now, and um, we're actually just going to reset this. So reset... All gains. And same thing, I'm going to listen for if there's stuff that I don't like. I feel like this is overall a cleaner signal. It's got a le less of the stuff that I don't like. All right, so that sounds pretty nice, and let's listen to it with the other one. All right. Now, that's how we're doing everything with the stock compressors. The other option here is to just uh, use some fancy plugins like... Um, there is a great plugin called uh, Neutron uh, that I have actually purchased. And if we threw something like Neutron on here, it's going to do some pretty heavy processing. We'll see if we even want to do it. Um, but for right now, we're going to leave these acoustics as is. And I do want to start thinking about reverb. I do want to start thinking about where's my reverb going to come from. So uh, in Ableton, I've got these returns up here. And for this one, I think let's do a reverb called uh, Guitar Room. It's in here. It sounds all right. You know, I'm not too hot on it. We're not going to hear a lot of the reverb. We just don't want it to be totally clean. So let's see here. If I start boosting up. And now um, we've got that little ac of acoustic reverb, and what I want to hear is what that sounds like now um, over my drums. So I want to try to get the acoustic drums, uh, the acoustic and the drums going together pretty well. So here's my acoustic guitar, and now we're going to add in the drums.
And actually, there's one problem here. Uh, and since all of my reason parts, right, I've got, I've got all of my reason instruments coming through one track over here. That can be a problem. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to separate things. I'm going to create a new thing that's just called drums. And I'm going to have it, uh, the, the file, the music is going to come in from reason. The, my, my input is not going to come from an external instrument. Um, and it's going to come from reason instead. And then instead of it coming from the main mix of reason, the one, two mix, I'm going to have it come from this mix right here, 17, I think this is the one I want. We'll find out if I'm right or wrong, 17 and 18. And the reason is, I can go over here to reason, and I can take my drum machine, which is right here, and I can send the output to a specific uh, uh, relay or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, right here, 17 and 18. So I'm going to take my drum signal, this is my drums only, and I'm going to move them over here. Now, just my drum part is actually being sent to just here. So if I hit play, you can see that the, this is now just the organ that I had. So I can mute the organ now. I really shouldn't be thinking too much about the drums without thinking about the bass as well. So let's get the bass guitar involved here as well. And we'll turn that guy on. And I'm going to mute my acoustic guitars. Now for my bass guitar, let's actually do some... Right now that's a direct-in bass, right? I didn't do anything to it. And what I'd like to do is I'm going to add this little bass thing that I've made. Um, it's just a SHB bass amplifier, which you can get free from Ignite uh, Amps. And uh, I put quite a, you know, an EQ curve on here and a little bit of compression. And, you know, what I'm listening for, I'm listening to be able to hear the kick drum and, I'm, and have the power of the bass. I don't want those two, like, fighting too much with each other. I want to be able to hear that kick really pop, but I also want to hear the fundamental of my bass guitar. Now, you're not really supposed to, oh, it's, this is all subjective. I mean, there's no rules on any of this. Sometimes I like to put a little reverb on my bass guitar, just depending on. But you know what? I think I'm going to pass on that. I think I'll just kind of have most of that stuff be done in post, like a one final reverb on the entire track. So it feels like these are balanced. It feels like my bass guitar and my drums are balanced. So if I add my acoustics in now, I want them to be way quieter than that. Way quieter. I almost want acoustic guitars in these kind of settings to almost sound like hi-hats or tambourines. I want them to be like a rhythmic element that you can barely tell is actually doing harmony. Um, I just like it. It gives it a shimmer. You're not like, you don't want the acoustic guitars to be at the forefront. I mean, unless you're doing a song like Hotel California, there's a moment for those acoustic guitars to shine up front, but they're really a support instrument. So it's, it's easy to make them too loud. And I've learned that it's almost impossible to make them too quiet. You know? So I'm gonna really duck these things back. And then I'm gonna add in uh, those electric arpeggios that I had. Now I like that, but there's like no depth to this uh, to this arpeggio thing. So like, I feel like it definitely needs some effects. And I'm thinking maybe like a tremolo. Maybe I can put a tremolo on there. So um, to do this, I'm gonna actually create a parallel track because I think this is all right on its own. I think it needs a little EQ. And uh, so we're going to create a parallel track. And to do that, I'd like to take um, my guitar part here. And I'm just going to create a new empty track. And I'm going to have the audio come in. So that means, you know, something's going to be coming into this track. And it's not going to be an external instrument. What it's going to be, it's going to be the audio from ARP. Uh, this, so this is my ARP track, right? So the audio here is going to be sent to this track. And I'm going to call it ARP Return. And now what I can do is all the audio after this chain is getting sent to here and I can start messing with it. I could add like a giant reverb to it, huge mega reverb to it. 
right? And all of that reverb only exists on this channel right here. And I can also add an auto pan. And let's turn this way up so you can hear what's going on. So it, that, that's creating the space I want. It's just, you know, really, really, really loud. So let's see if we can get away with that by just turning it down. We could also do this as kind of a tremolo just by putting these out of phase. Listen. All right, I think it works, but once again, like with these headphones on, I'm suspecting that I might have more reverb on than I want. Um, we're gonna keep it as is right now, okay? And now that these are two different tracks, I'm gonna group them together. And these will be called uh, arpeggio. And what else do we gotta work with here? Oh, the organs. So let's bring the organs back. They're far too loud in my opinion. But they might get benefits from some of that uh, guitar delay, that guitar room delay. So I'm just going to crank up A over here. I'm sorry, guitar room reverb. Okay, now just for the sake of it, let's hear what happens if I bring in those power chords. Let's try that again. I think they would need a lot more uh, power chordness. I think they'd need a lot more distortion. Okay, well, I'm getting distracted with these headphones. It's time for me to turn, take these off and listen with my monitors instead. And then I'm going to jump back in here and tell you all the changes that I have made. Okay, I'm back. Uh, what I've done is quite a few changes. Um, on the organ, I add a little bit of EQ boost up up here. And on the drums, um, I beefed up some of the low end on those drums. Uh, on my acoustic guitar, um, I didn't do much other than just play with the mix. Um, and then uh, the bass guitar, uh, just played around with that. The arpeggio just, yeah, as I suspected, way more reverb than I needed. And then on the power chords, I just needed way more distortion. Those power chords were really, really weak. So for these power chords, what I did is I just cranked up the distortion on these amplifiers. Once again, free amplifier plugins, the uh, Lapau Lecto. And I juiced up the gain on there, and it gave me this instead. So here's the new version of it. Um, if we start it from right here... And with my headphones on, it sounds terrible. But with my headphones off, it sounded much better. So this is always a curious thing. What I'm going to do, though, now, regardless, is I would like to get this to the mastering point. Um, I would like to master it so I can just kind of listen to what it sounds like uh, in my other rooms, maybe in my car, and see what sounds really bad about it. Then I can come back to this with fresh ears at a different time, and I can make some final adjustments. I do not recommend you just work like this with headphones on and then call it final. You know, ears are a sensitive thing. I think it's much like a, 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 the olfactory senses. They can become desensitized very easily, and you can become immune to certain things. You become, get these blind spots. So it's extremely advised, in my opinion, to give your ears a break and then come back things, to things later on. So I would like to give my ears a break here, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to render this out as a WAV file, and I want to make sure uh, that this entire thing has a little bit of headroom. So... I want to have like a little about 6 dB a headroom, and I'm just going to turn my master volume down a little bit. 
So basically, when I do that, I can render it out. I'll plenty of headroom for when I do mastering on a separate file. So let's do that. We'll take this down, and then I will uh, we'll skip to the mastering process. All right, so all we do is I've rendered that file out, and here's what it looks like with no mastering on it. And we will drag it down here into a clean new file. Now, I don't know how to master, but I do have Ozone plugins. And... Uh, <laughs> That's that's good enough for me, all right? A lot of times, actually, if you pay for mastering, you'd be surprised how many times somebody just slaps an Ozone plug-in on something. Uh, I'm actually more comfortable using Ozone 5 than I am using Ozone 8. Uh, Ozone 5 was the version that I was using um, before I went legit. And now that I'm on Ozone 8, I'm really not that comfortable with using it. Um, but what I do know that I, I like to do, uh, you can already hear it's adjusting my voice because my voice is coming through Ableton. Um, I like to just kind of hear things with presets, uh, and once I find a preset that's somewhere where I need to, I like to go in there and change things. So I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to let you know what presets I chose and what I edited there. Um, but with the latency and with the headphones, it's not going to help me, so once again, I'm going to take off my headphones. All right, so long story short, all I did was go through some presets, and I found this depth and clarity preset. And then I went in through here, and I just adjusted things so they were kind of peaking where I felt like they should be peaking, and... I mean, not much, just playing. I, I'm not an expert at this stuff at all, but I can hear, you know, and my ears work, so I can hear when something's changing, and I can hear when something's not changing, um, and I just adjusted some of these meters and, you know, just played around with it. So uh, by no means am I a pro with this, but I do know for sure that when I play around with these things, things sound better when I'm done. So a lot of times what I'll do is I will make like five different sets with five different different mastering patches, and then I'll listen to them all, and I'll label them different, and I'll A-B test them. Which of these mastering presets that I like the most. And then since I'm new to Ozone 8, I have a lot to learn. Um, but at least with Ozone 5, I became familiar with these little modules and I became familiar with what they did and I was able to uh, tweak them a little bit more. I'm not there yet with Ozone 8 and one day I'll get there. But uh, I don't think you need to be a pro at it just to make it sound better. Um, so the goal here is to render this out and then take a listen to it and then come back a different day and uh, make it sound better. So this will pretty much do it for today. The next step is to listen to it and then make some final changes. And then the very last step will be adding the lead guitar. I do want to talk about how we actually uh, record a lead guitar tone here for this. So until then. All right, we're back. And we have changed some very, very, very subtle things uh, to this track. And I'd like to go over them separately. First, the organ track, I added a little extra distortion to. So if you listen to this organ track now, you'll hear... I just added this scream distortion. Without it, it's a lot cleaner, right? And with it, a lot more grit. And then I also added some chorus to it. I just thought that would kind of widen things out. Now, it's a very subtle layer in the entire track, but, you know, I've learned a lot of times it's those subtle things that all add up. If something sounds, um, you know, if something sounds flat, then go fix it. And it's the, it's the sum of all those little, little, little tiny things that have a tendency to make a track sound good. Um, the drums, I did not change much. Um, I just uh, beefed up the low end there a little bit, and I reduced the volume of the snare drum and the hi-hats just to even things out a little bit on the mix there. Uh, for the acoustic guitar, I didn't touch those at all. The electric guitar, I didn't touch those at all. Um, and uh, let's see here, the bass guitar, just some subtle tweaks here with the EQ. I dipped out a little there. So these were just things that I heard and I played around with, and you know, very, very, very small changes with the mix. Um, nothing too severe. So uh, from here, it's time to add in the lead guitar. And I have already recorded all these leads on a separate track. I recorded them on this one called Only Leads. And I do this because I had added so many effects on this file that I started getting latency issues. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll export out an entire file and I'll make a brand new set. I'll make a brand new file, I'll drag in a rendered MP3 or WAV file, and then I'll just record my solos on top of that. And that way I don't have to worry about all these latency issues anymore. So here is all of the leads that I've recorded. And with Ableton, I can just take this and I can drag it all the way in here and it'll bring in all those things that I've recorded. And uh, I have quite a few of them because there's these are different examples, right? So for this, this is all for a lesson I'm going to be doing. And uh, each one of these is just kind of a different example. And I want them to all sound the same. So really all I need to do for each one of these ones, there's uh, seven different ones. And they can all sound the same, but I just need to make one of them sound good. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with just one of these guys, maybe this guy right here. And um, we're going to trim things up 
and we're going to take a listen to it here really quick and i'm going to turn off some of the effects that i already have on here so we're kind of starting fresh So that tone right there is being developed uh, with this chain down here. And what I've got is the TSE 808. This is another free plugin, and it's basically just a tube screamer pedal. So I've got that on, and you can see I've got the drive turned all the way down, and I've got the tone set up the middle. It just adds a little grit to it. If you want to hear what it sounds like without it, I'm going to turn it off right now. I'll turn it back on right So it adds a lot, uh, quite a bit of grit to it. And then after that, we've got the actual amplifier here. This is the Nick Crow uh, Lab. Um, this is another free Amps and VST. I love these free Amps and VSTs. I know there's some very expensive ones, and one day I would really like to get the, um, I think there's the Helix Native uh, plugin. Uh, it's basically the Helix Native pedal, but it's all just done with VSTs, and it's pretty pricey. I think it's over $500. Eventually, I'd like to get one of those. I'd love to get it for free from Helix, uh, from, uh, I think it's Line 6. Um, but, you know, we'll see. Uh, until then, these still do the job very, very well. So this is just that amplifier right here. Um, and then after that, this is actually not being used. I'm going to delete that. After that, I've just got my impulse loader. And this is the Catharsis Impulse Pack. And I'm using this impulse here, uh, S-Press-High. So that's the tone I currently have. And this is kind of a default one. I, I have saved this as lead tone. And I like the way it sounds. It's a good starting point. But it definitely needs some goop. It needs some effects. So what I've done is I've created a new uh, track down here, all right? And what is on this track is a delay and an equalizer. So I've got all of the audio coming out of here and in to here. So that's why right here, if you look at where this audio is coming in from, it's coming in from track 16. So that means all my guitar solo stuff is going through this. It's being processed through a delay. And then after it's being delayed, it's being EQ'd out. So let's listen to this all on its own with both these tracks. We'll turn this guy on now. And I'm going to turn up the delay. Way too much delay, right? But now you can at least hear what's going on. So I'm just kind of ducking this down. This is at the very end. This is just a little gain. So I can just kind of turn down the volume of my new effect there. And the reason I like having this little EQ here is because I can filter out what kind of frequencies I want. You know, if I want this really goopy, low stuff, listen to this. I'm just going to just kind of block out. I'm going to have this little band here and listen to the kind of goopiness I get instead. Now, obviously, I'm doing things really loud so you can hear really the exaggerated effect. The opposite is only doing the tinny stuff, that really thin, high stuff. Listen to this. So I don't like either of those in the extremes. I like it kind of here in the middle where I had it before. But I do like to have that versatility of what kind of thing am I filtering out. Now, it looks like Ableton has now included this built-in bandpass. So this is a little uh, a strip that I had in, uh, made in Ableton 9. And now Ableton 10 looks like it automatically has this built in. So that saves me um, an extra click of creating an EQ. It probably saves me a little bit of CPU speed, too. So I'm going to experiment with that to figure out what's going on there. Because, hey, if that's exactly what that is, that saves me an extra click. So that's kind of where I'm looking at for my lead tone. It's just basic distortion um, with a little bit of goop and i consider goop to be you know reverb and or delay and right now we don't have any reverb on here we can play around with that and we'll try it um and we're going to turn the feedback down on this delay a little bit uh we'll try a little reverb through our return on this guitar room reverb And I don't mind that. That was a lot of reverb. I turned, cranked it all the way up, and I actually like the effect it gave me. All right.
right, so I'm mixing with headphones on, and I never trust my mix with headphones on, but it does feel like my lead guitar is a little loud. So I'm going to take this whole chain here, and I'm going to just bring it down a skosh. And then it's not a bad idea to do something like we're going to take our main guitar. This is the actual guitar right here. Uh, and then this is the effect. So if we labeled these properly, we'd see uh, this is the lead. And then this is our uh, delay. And what I'd like to do is I'd like to take our lead and kind of maybe pan it just to one side a tiny bit, just a little bit like that, and then take our effect and pan that a little bit. So it's going to be a slightly off center, but it might give us more dimensionality, right? We don't want everything to just kind of be right in the center. Um, some spatial awareness is nice, especially for listeners with headphones on, but even without, uh, it's those, that dimension makes a lot of difference. So let's take a listen here really quick. And now that they're separated, I might actually boost my delay signal a little bit more. So basically that's where I'm thinking. And now that I've got this nice little signal, now that I've got this chain, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this chain and I'm basically just going to copy it and paste it um, onto all the other ones that I have. So now that I've made one good lead patch, I can basically apply it to this, I can apply it to this, and I can apply it to that. But it's very simple. It just uses that TSE-808, the Tube Screamer pedal, right into an amplifier, uh, like a free amp sim VST, right into an impulse loader using the free Catharsis impulse pack. From there, I made my own little return with some delay and some EQ, and you know, tweak things, add a little reverb to taste, and see what you get. So uh, I'm gonna do one more mix without my headphones on, and uh, we will play that at the very, very end. Or actually, you know what, we'll just save that for the lesson video. So what I would uh, encourage you to do is when you're done watching this, um, check the link below, because in a few days I will have an update to this video that will um, be a big lesson on how do you solo over these chords? What's the music theory behind these four simple chords? And you'll see the final product of all of this after it's been mastered and everything. And this is just that gory creation prog process. So this it looks to be uh, my first video on the Jake Lizio channel. So if you sat through the entire thing, thank you for watching. I definitely appreciate it. And I hope you learned something from this. Uh, I'm just basically walking you through this process. And hopefully through that walkthrough, uh, you learn something. And I'm sure I'm going to learn something as far as what helps you out and what is uh, the kind of content you're interested in learning and um, what is working through this format and what isn't. So once again, thanks for watching and I will see you in the future.